Imagine a spa and salon where customers can book appointments, ask about services, and even provide feedback, all through WhatsApp, and all handled seamlessly by an AI agent. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a powerful drag AI agent on WhatsApp business using an ATEM. Meet Jane. She is looking for some spa services, and this is how her first interaction looks like with the business. Hi, can you briefly tell me about the services you provide? And instantly she receives a list of services. Then she asks, what are the timings for spa and relaxation? And this is how AI agent replies. Spa and relaxation services starts at 9 a.m. and run until 6 p.m. Please let me know which one you'd like to schedule. Now she can go ahead and ask to book an appointment here itself. What do you think Jane's experience is like with this business? It would be wonderful, right? She can anytime come here and ask for her previous sessions. Tell me about all the sessions I've taken so far. And it found all those details and shared it with Jane. She can even share her feedback and complaints. I was not very happy with the previous session. I had to wait a lot. And just like that, Jane's feedback is saved to our database and instantly shared with our team on Slack. So we can make her next visit even better. If you are as excited about this as I am, make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on the latest in AI and automation. Alright, here's what's on the menu for today. We'll start by navigating the Facebook developers dashboard to get our WhatsApp business API up and running. Next, we will dive into Anyton to create the workflows that will power our AI agent, connecting it to our database and Slack. Finally, we'll deploy our AI agent and test it to ensure everything works seamlessly. Let's get started. First, we need to create a WhatsApp application. We need to go to developers.facebook.com, then click on My Apps, create a new app, give the app name here, click on Next, select Other, and click on Next. Select Business, click Next, and then click on Create App. Once you do that, you'll see a dashboard like this. You need to scroll down to WhatsApp and click on Setup. Select the business portfolio and click on Continue. Enter the SMS received on your mobile and click on Confirm. After this, you'll start seeing WhatsApp here in the active products list. You can click on this and click on Quick Start. Now here you can set up the account information, message templates that you want to send to your users, and WhatsApp flows. You can configure webhooks, WhatsApp SDK, and so on. For this video, we won't need most of these things. Now in this WhatsApp app, we need to set up three things. First, we need to add our business mobile number. We can do that by going here and clicking on add phone number. Now getting this new number approved may take some time. So for now, I'll just stick with this test number to test out our workflows. The second thing you need to do is adding any done workflows webhook in this WhatsApp app so that whenever a message is received from any user on your WhatsApp number, and this WhatsApp app triggers your AnyTen workflow. Now to do that, we need to go to AnyTen, create a new workflow, and add the first step as a webhook. Keep the method type as get will respond using respond to webhook node. And let's add respond to webhook. Let's save it, open webhook node, and copy the test URL from here. And here, we need to scroll down and open Configure Webhooks. Now this is where we need to add any 10 webhook URL. We need to put the webhook URL here and just give this token a name, for example, test. Now before verifying this, we need to go back to any 10 and listen for the test event. And now click on Verify and Save. It says callback URL couldn't be validated. Let's see what's going on in any 10. Now here we can see we received the event successfully, but the workflow couldn't complete. It's because we are not returning anything from this webhook node. So let's return text from here and return anything from here. Let's say hub.challenge. Then click on test workflow and it will start waiting for the trigger event. Now let's go back to WhatsApp app and click on verify and save again. And this time it succeeded. In the Anyton, we can see the workflow completed. Now let's scroll down and subscribe to Messages Even. 
now we need to make sure if the message is sent to this test number which is representing our whatsapp business number are being forwarded to any tenant successfully or not for that i'll send a message to this test number i'm in whatsapp and here i'll just send a message saying hi on this number now before that we need to create another webhook with a post method i'll copy paste this and change the method to post because the messages sent on the business number will be forwarded as post events instead of get events and for now we can keep the respond as immediately and click on listen for test events now in whatsapp let's send a message hi i need some help as you can see our any tenant successfully received the event it means that it is working end to end now let's copy the production url from here move the workflow to active state then go back to webhook configuration page remove the test webhook that we added and add the production url and click on verify and save and it was successful now let's scroll down and subscribe to messages events now the third thing we need to do in this developers dashboard is to get whatsapp business api token now the easiest way to do that is click on generate access token over here but the problem is this token is short lived let's copy this token go to tools open access token debugger and paste the token over here and click on debug as you can see the token will expire in just 1 hour now we can scroll down and click on extend access token to extend the validity and i believe the validity of that token is 3 months but if you want to get a permanent token you can scroll down on this webhook page and you'll see this link learn how to create a permanent token you can go through this page follow the steps and you will be able to do that in fact let me go over it really quick so what you need to do is open the apps now this is the app that i was using to set up the whatsapp account now there is a business associated with it we need to click on this we need to go to system users on this dashboard then click on add new user give the user a name and the role as let's say admin and create the system user once you have this open the system user and assign assets go to apps select the app that you want to add it to and for now i'll just give full control and click on assign assets and we are done now we can click on generate token from here select the app for which we want to do it and click on next here we can select the validity duration 60 days or never if you want a permanent token you can select never and click on next and you'll get your permanent token for now i'll just work with this temporary token i'll copy it from here go back to aniden add a new node for whatsapp business cloud and send message as the action you can create a new credential put the access token over here and you can find the business account id here on this api setup page and we need to paste it here now we are done with all the setup on the facebook developers dashboard and now let's build our anyten workflow as discussed earlier we want this workflow to help users with any company specific information with users previous bookings or orders and if users provide some feedback we want it to save in a database and send the feedback on a slack channel for employees to take care of it we will add all of those tools in this workflow first let's clean up the things here now we don't need this this get webhook flow so we can remove it all the messages will be sent via a post webhook call if we look at the webhook sample request we can see that in body there is a field called changes and inside changes we have messages we want to process only the requests that contain this messages field in the body this field will be there when the message is sent from a user to our business this webhook will be triggered in the other events as well for example message delivered message read message sent and so on and we don't want to process those events so first let's add a if node and in the if node we want to check for the presence of this messages field so we can drag it here and then let's put the check on the array if it exists or not and execute this step so in this case the array exists so we have this response otherwise it would have returned false 
If it is true, then we want to send this request to an AI agent. Let's use tools agent for this workflow. And for the prompt, let's define it here. We can simply put the user query, which we can find in the webhook request. If we scroll down, we have these messages and we have the message body. So we can drag it here and let's add the contact number as well. Now we need to give a system message, but we will get back to this later. Let's add the chat model, open AI chat model. Then let's add the memory. For now, I'll just go with window buffer memory, but you should always try to use an external memory. Now the session ID has to be unique. So let's define it manually. Let's go to the mappings, go to webhook, and let's pick the WhatsApp ID, which will be unique for each user. Now we need to make one more change in the webhook. Once the webhook is called, we want to return the response immediately so that meta servers are not waiting for the response. Because if this workflow takes a lot of time, the requests may time out and they may re-trigger the webhook multiple times. And we don't want that. So we want to select immediately in the respond and we need to return the response code as 200. Now let's add our tools. The first tool we need is Slack. If user submits a feedback, we want this AI agent to send the feedback on a Slack channel. I have already created this channel customer iPhone feedback and I've connected the Slack APIs. Now in this node, let's set the description manually. Sends customer feedback to the customer feedback Slack channel using Slack API. Resource is of type message, operation is send, and then we want to send the message to a channel, customer feedback, message type is a simple text message, and now we need to select the message text. Now if you scroll down, it says use the expression this for any data to be filled by the model. So let's give the text message as from AI feedback underscore summary. Now feedback underscore summary will be filled by the AI agent and we will give this instruction in the system message. Now this is our first tool. Next, we want this AI agent to be able to fetch the user's previous bookings. Now you may have data in different kind of databases. You may have SQL or NoSQL and you can literally attach any kind of database over here. For now, I'll use the Airtable. I have already set up the test data in Airtable. I have created a base with the names Spa and Salon and I have created two tables, order book and feedback. Order book contains five columns, contact, customer name, service name, date and price. Contact is the primary key. And this is some sample data. And the next table is feedback. Now feedback contains two columns, contact and feedback. Now in any 10, let's define the description manually. This is what I've given. Get customers previous orders or bookings from order book table from air table. Set the resource to record, operation to search, select the base, select the table. And now we need to give the formula to search. So we are putting the filter where contact number is equal to the given contact number. Again, this contact underscore number will be populated by AI agent while executing. Now let's add our third tool, which is again going to be Airtable. This tool will be used for saving the customer feedback in the feedback table. Let's give the description. It saves customer feedback in the feedback table in Airtable. Resource will be record. Operation is create. Let's select the base and the table and then map each column manually. So we have two columns. Let AI agent fill the contact and feedback value. And now we are left with our final tool to give access to the company documents. That will require us to create another workflow that will process the business's documents, create embeddings out of them and store them in a vector store. Then we can create a tool and attach to this AI agent to search for the relevant embeddings when required. So I've created a new directory in my Google Drive with the name test docs. And I've put a file over here that contains the business specific information about the services it provides, the location, timings, and so on. And I have created the simple workflow to create embeddings out of that document. So the first node is Google Drive Trigger. It watches for any file creation events in that test docs directory in Google Drive. Once it detects a new file, it downloads the file, and then Pinecone Vector Stored node will break down the file into multiple chunks 
convert them into embeddings and save them in the pinecone vector store. So I've connected the pinecone account over here. I've selected the index name and the pinecone namespace. Default data loader will receive the downloaded file in the binary form. And I'm just adding the metadata with each embedding, for example, file name. I have already executed the workflow and in the pinecone, we can see all of those embeddings. So these are the embeddings and this is the text for which the embedding was created. Now let's add our vector store tool here. Let's give it a name and a description. It retrieves data about Green Globe Wellness Retreat Company. Let's attach a vector store to this. Since we have stored our embeddings in Pinecone Vector Store, let's select that. Operation mode as Retrieve Documents and select the Pinecone index and add Pinecone namespace as Green Globe Wellness. Let's attach the embedding model to this. Embeddings OpenAI. Let's attach a model to this vector store, OpenAI chat model. And that's it, our tool is now ready. Now in the AI agent, we need to give the system prompt. I'm giving a very detailed system prompt since we have multiple tools and we want to clearly call out how to use those tools. So this is the system prompt I'm using. You are an assistant for this business. Your responsibilities include handling customer queries about business information, accessing their previous bookings and managing their feedback. Then we are defining the capabilities and tools of this agent. Then we are explaining each tool we have given. And then there are some general instructions. For example, identify the intent of the user's query. Let's connect WhatsApp Business Cloud node to this AI agent. Now this is the final step in this workflow and it will send the message to the user. Let's send this message to the workflow. Can you share my previous order details? My previous experience could have been better. I had to wait a lot. Also tell me what are the morning session timings. So it will make the AI agent execute all the tools. And we got this response. It was able to fetch all the previous order details. Then it is acknowledging the feedback that we have given. And it has also shared the morning session timings, which were there in the Google Doc that we provided. We can see the updated feedback in the feedback table. And we got a new notification for this feedback in our Slack channel. And this is the workflow that was executed to get our response back. Now, along with this, we see three more workflows. If we open these, we can see that these were not actually executed. The value of if was false and the workflow didn't go any further. Now, the reason is, if we look at the webhook request, we can see that this webhook was called because of a change in status of the message, saying that the message was sent. The other workflows also indicate a change in the status. Here it says delivered. So we wanted to avoid executing the workflow for all the other messages. And for that reason, we had added this if block. And there you have it a fully functional RAG AI agent on WhatsApp business using Anyten. I hope you found this tutorial as exciting to watch as it was to make. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to drop a comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone you might find it helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.